Okay, so story time about my strict stepdad. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school, but we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane and I'm going to walk you guys through my childhood. So my whole life I have lived in a very large and busy city and not the good part of the city either. My parents and I lived in a really shitty house, but since we lived in a shitty house, we could do a bunch of things. Like we had money to go and do stuff all the time. Like we went to Disney four years in a row. I always had really good Christmases. Every night we would eat out. We were pretty much what you call hood rich, okay? Now I never knew how my dad made his money because it's not like he was gone from nine to five every day. If anything, he would just leave at random times during the day and then he would come back home or sometimes he would travel on a business trip for a day and be back the next day. And my mom and my dad got together whenever she was 16 and he was 18 and then she ended up getting pregnant with me whenever she was 19 and my dad was 21. Does anybody else have super young parents? Because my parents, whenever they had me, were 16 and 19. I always felt like the weird kid in school because everybody's like, oh my God, yeah, like my dad is 40. And I'm like, my dad's 27. Both of my mom's parents kicked her out whenever they found out that she was pregnant. They said if she would have got an abortion, they would have, you know, supported her and not disowned her. But also they really, really, really hated my dad. So like I said, I didn't know what my dad did for a living. I mean, now obviously I know, but back when I didn't, I was so confused on why my grandparents hated him. So my mom and I ended up moving in with my dad and his family, but that didn't really last long because his brothers and uncles and everybody who lived there, it was like a two bedroom house and there were like nine people living there. Well, they would all steal from my dad. So we had to get out of there. So, you know, fast forward, I find out what my dad does for work and I also find out why my grandparents hate him. He was involved in a lot of drug and gang activity and he was like one of the top people, which I know doesn't make sense because like I said, we lived in the hood and you would think that we would have a lot of money. But my mom always said it was because we didn't want to draw too much attention to us because obviously what we were doing was very illegal. But because even though we had the money for nice things, we didn't have nice cars. We literally tried to blend in as much as we could with everyone else around us. And from what my mom also said, we did a pretty good fucking job in it because nobody suspected a thing. Oh, and to why my grandparents hate my dad, it's because my grandma's sister had actually bought drugs off of my dad not long before my mom got pregnant with me and she ended up ODing and passing away. And I don't know how my grandma exactly found out that it was him or why my dad isn't in jail for that. Well, actually, no, I do know. It's because my dad since he was like, you know, one of the top people in whatever bullshit he was involved in, he didn't really do the selling of the drugs to normal people. You know, he had people who would do that for him. So all she knew was that he was behind all of it. He didn't sell the drugs to her, but he did put them out there to be sold to her, if you get what I'm trying to say. So fast forward, my dad actually ends up going to prison when I was about nine years old, you know, because remember how I said that my dad was involved in a lot of gang activity? Well, I guess that him and some of his boys had issues with another group of people who were involved in the same stuff that they were doing. And actually because of the issues that my dad was having with people, we moved into another apartment because things in our neighborhood were getting very dangerous. And now my dad actually had people looking for him because he had apparently pissed some people off. Anyway, so the one day my dad is driving around with his friends and they're looking for this guy. And this guy just happened to be sitting on his porch in front of his house with his family. And my dad and his friends did a drive-by shooting. Um, they ended up unaliving a six-year-old girl and the guy that they had issues with and they also ended up injuring a few people. Now my dad swore up and down that he never shot anybody. And obviously we're all gonna think that he's lying because who wants to go to jail for life? Okay, but at the same time, he wouldn't tell who shot the gun. That is like the one thing that I cannot stand about those situations. Like maybe I don't get it. No, I actually don't get it because I'm sorry if I'm sitting in the car and someone just decides that, you know, my best friend or, you know, my friend just decides <laughs> we're just gonna out the window at random people and they just happen to unalive someone and the police ask if it was me. Um, I'm telling them who it was. I'm not going to jail for life. What do I look like? A snitch? Yeah, sure. I I'd rather be a snitch than be sitting in a jail cell for the rest of my life because I don't want to tell on my homies. See you later. Bye. You'll have your entire life to sit and think about how mad you are at me while you're sitting in jail. Okay, back to the story. Plot twist. One of my dad's friends in the car, like his right hand man, told the police that it was him who unalived both of those people and who just was shooting at the, the gun in general. It was pretty much a setup. 
okay? And my dear old mother was a part of this setup. So my mom had been sneaking around with the guy that ratted on my dad, and we're gonna call him Marcus. Um, yeah, they've been sneaking around for the past two years behind my dad's back, which is weird because my mom was like my dad's ride or die, okay? And I wish you guys could have saw the relationship so that way you could see how like just out of the blue this shit was. And she would have done anything for my dad. Well, before I found out that she was a fucking snake. Like she studied their rights and their laws and stuff like that. So that way, in case my dad got into some trouble, she would know what the fuck they could and couldn't do about it. And in the second apartment that we had, she created a crawl space in the wall whenever my dad was on a business trip, a business trip. So that way, in case the police ever did come looking for him, um, he could literally just hide in the wall and the police would literally never find him, never. So yeah, that was a shocker. Um, and I guess the reason why they decided to set him up instead of just like, you know, her breaking up with him and getting together with Marcus was because she knew that if my dad found out that she was with Marcus, AKA, like I said, his right hand man, right hand man, he would have unalived the both of them. Like my dad was very, 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 very family oriented. And by that, I mean, if he couldn't be with my mom, no one can. Like, no, it just wasn't happening. So she told me that for our own safety and his, it was better for him to be in jail. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention that Marcus was the one who shot those people. Yeah, um, he was the one who shot them, which actually makes so much sense because my dad literally never got his hands dirty without anything. Like he just happened to be in the car whenever they saw them. Like apparently they weren't driving around looking for this guy, but usually my dad would never go along for anything like that. So, you know, now we're living with Marcus and I'll definitely say that the relationship that they have is better than the one that my mom and my dad had, but like my mom and my dad had like a toxic love, okay? But they both liked it. So yeah, but I still hate both of them. But I still do not forgive them for what they did because they did some pretty shady ass fucking shit for supposedly caring about my dad and, you know, being his ride or die. Not only do I not forgive them for that, but I also don't forgive them because they literally cut off all communication between my dad and I. Like, I want to say after the first, like, few months of my dad being in jail, I would go and visit him and, you know, we would talk on the phone, but... Marcus and my mom cut all communication between him and I. So we also ended up moving in the middle of fucking nowhere in North Carolina. No offense if you live in North Carolina. I just don't think anything is there. And the reason why we ended up moving there was because Marcus and my mother were paranoid that my dad was gonna have someone on the outside come to unalive them. Which I know this sounds bad, but I kind of wish he did. No, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. I, I low-key did. But of course, I was never paranoid because, listen, because my dad fucking loved me and I knew he did. And he would have never put me in harm's way, okay? Like after my mom and my dad had me, he didn't want to have any more kids because he said that he wanted me to be his one and only child, you know, his princess. But like I said, my mom and my dad had a super toxic relationship that they both liked, like I said again. So they were always breaking up off and on. And anytime that they would break up, my dad would pack my little bag full of some clothes and some of my toys and he would take me with him wherever he went because he knew that my mom was gonna have her girlfriends over and they were gonna be smoking and drinking and he didn't want me around that bullshit. You know, this is kind of off topic, but not really. So like whenever I was younger, I was a daddy's girl at heart. Like I wanted my father all to myself. And yeah, the I was just like a daddy's girl, right? Well, my mom and him, the one time they broke up and I am standing there in the living room and I'm like three years old, right? And I start, going to their bedroom and just start taking my mom's stuff and putting it by the door and she's like what are you doing and i'm like i'm packing your stuff so you can leave if my kid ever <laughs> they're not my kid like now looking back at it oh my god i was like a crazy like i was just like a little psycho like i just wanted my dad all to myself so i literally was like kicking my mom out of the house anyway so back to the story in case you were confused about anything i just said here's a little summary my dad sold drugs and he was involved in a lot of gang activity marcus shot these people who were on the porch blamed it on my dad told the police it was him and then my mom and marcus were also sneaking around together and they set him up so that way they could be together and then they never allowed me to talk to him ever again they even moved me away from the rest of my family which was super fucked up because listen whenever i was little i was constantly at my grandma's house my dad's mom and she was like my best friend and she actually ended up passing away two years after my dad went to jail so the last time that i saw her was literally like i think a day before my dad had went to jail and i never saw her again after that i didn't get to say goodbye to her didn't get to go to the funeral nothing well my mom decided that she was gonna let marcus take the role of parenting me you know being my father 
so he would discipline me and yeah he was just annoying as fuck and he was really strict but for having no kids i don't know what to say i it's a good thing he can't have any kids. That's what I guess I'll say. And I'm just gonna give you some examples real quick of the unusual cruel punishment that he would put upon me if I did something that he did not like. Because him disciplining me wasn't the usual, you're grounded for a week, no TV for a week, give me your phone. No, none of that. Of course, why, can't, why couldn't it just be that? Well, whenever I was 13, I went to the mall with my friends and we met this group of boys there and we hung out with them the rest of the time at the mall. And whenever Marcus came to pick me up, he saw me sitting on the bench with my friends and these boys outside. The car ride was super quiet. And as soon as we got home, he gave me a lecture about sneaking around with boys, even though I literally wasn't sneaking around. If I was sneaking around, you would have never fucking saw me with them. Are you dumb? Like, how does that make sense? It doesn't. Anyways, and he was like, you just don't want to be named a slut and a whore at this age. He was like, that's the type of name you'll get if you're hanging out with a group of boys, blah, 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 blah. And oh my God, it was just like the most ridiculous shit ever in my life. But um, you're probably sitting here thinking, okay, he gave you a lecture, so what? Well, the second part of the punishment was I was no longer allowed to hang out with my friends by myself or go anywhere by myself. I had to be accompanied by him every single time that I wanted to do something. If I wanted to go to the mall with my friends, he had to be there. If I wanted to go over my friends' houses, he had to be there. And because he couldn't be at my friends' fucking houses because it was weird if a grown-ass man is going over his daughter's friend's house with her, that's fucking weird. So then my friends were only allowed at my house and he would have to supervise and we were only allowed to hang out in the living room. And I know you're probably thinking like, oh, well, you know, this is just if boys are around. No, mm -mm. nope. He would still supervise me even if I was just hanging out with my girlfriends. And my mom never said anything about how he parented me because he paid for everything. The first time that I tried to talk to her about it, I was standing in the kitchen as he's giving me a fucking lecture. And I look at her and I'm like, mom, are you hearing this? Like, what the fuck? Obviously I didn't say what the fuck, but I'm like, mom, like, are you gonna do something about this? Like, and she just looks at me and she's like, listen to your father. My father, you disrespectful ass. And then she walks away. And I was also like their live-in maid. I would do the dishes, sweep the floors, clean the bathrooms, their bathroom and my bathroom. I would do everybody's laundry. And it wasn't like they tried to make cleaning easier on me. No, of course not. Like he would shave his beard in the sink and then just leave the hairs there. And I had to do this every three days, literally every three days. And then whenever I was 14, he got me a phone for Christmas. I was so excited, you know, I opened it and then I got a lecture. So I had to have my phone number hooked up to his phone so that way he could read all of my text messages that were coming in and going out because he would have to monitor them because he said I couldn't be trusted. Um, there was a password on the phone. I couldn't download any apps that I wanted to. I had to have his permission first his permission um let's see there's also a lot more like i wasn't allowed to eat whatever i wanted i if i went into the fridge and got food without asking or telling anybody i would be grounded there was never any food that i liked in the house um pretty much i had my meals planned out for me every single day for breakfast i was only allowed to have eggs and toast um for lunch it was oatmeal and a cut up piece of fruit or a vegetable and then for dinner i would have chicken salad yeah um i also had a nine o'clock bedtime yes a nine o'clock bedtime and you would think that if i wasn't in bed at nine o'clock i would just you know maybe get my phone taken away or something nope instead if i was not in bed by nine o'clock he would make me stay up the whole night and make me go to school in the morning just so that way i can see what will happen if i don't get enough sleep really really and by forcing me to stay awake the whole night, I mean, he would make me do various random things throughout the night. So that way I really didn't have a choice to go to sleep. Like he would literally, and by the way, this was between nine o'clock at night and seven in the morning. Sometimes he would make me wash the cars. Like for part two.